The first step to ordering Q-Specs lenses is to go to www.qspecs.com. As you can see on the screen here, um, you have your different tabs here, and we're going to go to Enter New RX. So, um, on this page here, you will be able to enter your prescription, select what lens options you want, and place your order. So, we're going to go through a, a mock order here. So, step one is to, um, first of all, we're going to put our patient's name in there. And for this example, I'm going to put test. And then under the lens type tab, we're going to have our three lens options. The first is single vision. The next is progressive. And the third option is progressive short. So for this lens, I'm going to do progressive. Then you'll have your front lens treatment. So your four options are hard coat, AR, polarized gray, and AR photochromatic gray. Um, for this lens, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a AR on the front side. And then on the back side, I'm also going to do an AR. Um, I'm just trying to make a, a standard dress pair of clear lenses here. So step two, we're just going to enter our RX in. It's a pretty standard format that you should already be familiar with. Um, so we're going to say the patient has a minus one sphere with a minus a half astigmatism. And the left eye will be the same thing. And um, make sure to type the axis in here. We'll call it 100 for both eyes also. And lastly, um, you want to select your ad power. Um, QSpec has ad powers from 1 to 3. So it's a good range and it will hit nearly 99% of your patient's needs. So we're going to select the 250 um, ad power, which is very common. And um, if you want to put any special notes um, here, you know, such as, um, you know, please make this lens larger, smaller, or modify the shape or anything like that, we can do this at this time. Um, and then hit continue. And um, so once we have put our lenses into the system here, um, the website is going to generate part numbers. Um, it's going to break it down into a front and back mold. So as you can see here, for the, the OD, which is the right eye, and the OS is the left eye, we have our front mold, the color is green, and the part number is shown here. And then we're going to have our back mold, the color is green, and the part number here. The same goes for the left eye. So, what we're going to do is, um, you can either write down these part numbers, or print out this page, and then we're going to go into our QSpecs um, rolling inventory box, and we're going to select these molds, and uh, from there, I will show you what to do next. Here's our rolling Q-Specs inventory box. As you can see, there's multiple drawers here. So I'm going to show you um, how the inventory is set up and organized. So as you can see here on the top drawer, we have all of our front molds. And you can see that they're labeled as F. So that's going to stand for front mold. And um, all these molds are green. So you know, you're having, you, know, you know you have the right one here. And then moving on to our second drawer, we're moving into our back molds. You can see the B on each mold. And all the molds are organized numerically, so it's very easy to find what you need. As I ordered on the QSpec system, I had the following codes. I have the front molds and the back molds. So the first one is the F0558. So let's go into the front drawer and get that mold.
Okay. And here it is. It's the F0558 front mold, right eye. And you can see, um, you can see that um, this is the mold we need. The, it says front mold with AR. It's a progressive addition lens. General purpose. Has a base of 50. The R stands for right eye, and it has an attitude 50. So uh, we definitely know this is the correct mold. The um, the code signifies it, and I can read it with the, um, all the words and letters there. Now let's get the mold for the left eye. Uh, we have an F0549. Here's the F5, F0549. Um, double checked, everything looks good. Next we're going to move on to the back molds. So I need two B6103s. And there's two B6103s. Next, I will show you how to um, scan these in and reorder them so they'll automatically come back and we can put them back in our inventory. After selecting your molds from the inventory, we want to make sure that we reorder these molds so we can replenish the inventory and also we want to verify that we have the correct molds. Um, anytime we're dealing with lenses, we want to make sure we have the correct prescription for the patient. That's the most important thing. So um, we're going to use a scanning system here to, um, to verify these molds. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click inside the box here where it says item under item ID and I'm going to look for the part number of F0558. And here is the F0558. And I'm going to scan it here. So I scanned it. It shows the, the part number here. I'm going to click the next box. And you can see there's a green chark, chark mark now. And that tells you that we have the correct mold and we're ready to scan this, the next mold. Again, shows our part number here. I'm going to click to the next mold. Shows we have the correct one. Next, we're going to click order missing molds. This will help us uh, replenish our stock again. Next, um, we're going to confirm our delivery address. We want to make sure they arrive to the right place. Okay, looks good. Um, There's standard delivery. So um, every time we order molds, they're going to come via um, second day FedEx delivery automatically. So it's great. And then five is to select the payment method. Um, we always are invoiced at the end of the month, and then you hit continue. What you'll do is, you'll take this and open it, and what I normally do is I'll put a thumb in here so that I don't drop it out and nothing contaminates the mold when I open it. And I'll do the same with the front. Okay, again. All right, so as we open this again, We'll take this out, and the ring here lets us sight axis on the axis ring. Okay, this one is axis 80, so we'll find axis 80, and we will line that up, and we will hold it, and press our mold, and we'll check all the way around to make sure that the mold is closed correctly, and our axis is indeed at 80. Is there any part of the mold that we should not touch? The inside of the mold, you never touch. Is there ever a time um, when the lens is thinner and we need to make it thicker? There is uh, a high minus or a high plus will thin out the edges to a point where you will use what we call a thickness ring. The thickness rings are a millimeter thicker and each millimeter adds five and a half roughly grams 
of monomer to the lens to make it thicker. So we'll mount this one as well. I always try to do things right lens first, so we will do that. This is, yes. And then what are you holding your hand? What goes into the lens molds? That's what we're gonna get into right now. This is called monomer. And if you can see, it stays in a light proof package. Simple fluorescent lighting cures this stuff and hardens it. So it's always important until you are ready to make your lens to keep a toggle of monomer in a dark place. These packages are light proof so that when you take them out, you will not have any problem. They'll always be the right consistency and they will always be ready for you. Okay? This, we call this a toggle and we're going to do this a little bit quick because we're exposed to light now. As you can see it's got a cap on here to show that it has been sealed, that this is indeed fresh and new. You simply pop that open, a line here, you want to make sure you use the other end. It's also edged off so it's a little bit pointed, has a tapering around it. There's a hole right here and that will feed right through down into your monomer toggle and you put it in there until you reach the tapering and I usually put a little bit of the tapering in there just because it's a little wider and it holds it a little stronger. Slot here which the monomer toggle does slide down into and you'll hang it just like that. And what what the, is this particular unit called here? This is a filling unit. Okay. And then the unit to the left. This is our curing and okay. this is our annealing. Okay. And this oven hardens the lenses and we'll get to it in just a minute. I'll explain it a little better. Uh, this is a high intensity fluorescent lighting that will harden the lenses. It'll cure them 10 minutes time. A kneeling oven is like a nice warm massage, relaxes the lenses, takes any aberrations out of it and lets it bring it, uh, the clarity that is required for the optics of a pair of eyeglasses and it brings the prescription up to true. So we'll take the right lens, we'll open this a little bit, you this down as much as possible. This yellow is a filter that works against the fluorescent lighting. That's why you'll notice that the yellow tubing even. Try to take as much precaution as we can. This unit turns, okay, there's a handle over here that you can see that'll tilt that thing. All right, and we'll show you what that's for right about now. This hangs right on here. This has a little ring around it and when you insert it it should never go in any further than that ring. You'll give it a tilt, you'll close this and with turning this it increases pressure on the monomer toggle which will bring the monomer out of the toggle. As you can see it's starting to move and as it comes around you will want, I lift it a little bit just because I get a better view is there a certain speed the monomer should be flowing into the mold? Always take your time. Always go slow. The faster you go, the more likely you are to induce bubbles. And I can see right now there are no micro bubbles in this. So we're going to take it nice and easy. We've got it tilted. And as the monomer slides in, you can see it's starting to fill here. Okay, kind of paving the way. So we're going to want to keep a little bit of pressure. Excuse me, I'm going to slip right in here a little bit. And we're going to increase pressure on it and we're going to bring the monomer into the mold at a nice even speed. And you watch it, it'll just fill the lens for you. How do you know when to increase the speed of the filling? A lot of it is done by experience. A lot of it is done by uh, what the prescription is, how thick the lens is going to be. The thicker the lens, the easier it is to fill, simply because you're not so worried about the thickness of the opening in the mold to, again, induce bubbles in it. What's the purpose of slanting um, the mold to the right? Well, what it does is it, it, it's a slower fill and it, lets, it keeps gravity, we'll feed it around the edge first and let it start to fill from there so that you're filling even. You're not creating holes in your lens blank. And 
we're almost full. When it gets here, I always try to slow down just a little bit. I notice you straighten the mold. Yes. What's the purpose? Straighten the mold. This is an air vent. Let it vent up to the, and leave it on top so if the air pressure isn't a squirting monomer out the top. Okay, and what, you can watch it, you can see the line starting to come together as it fills. Like I said, I take it easy. I try to keep a little bit of monomer flow going. But I want it to be slow. And the reason I want it slow, I'll show you in just a minute. We're going to let this fill just a little bit in the air vent. Just to kind of make sure nothing happens. But I actually take this out while it's moving and slide it in here. This way, we already know there's no bubbles coming through the line. Let's just make that work in our favor. Okay, again, we'll tilt it. We'll let it start to fill this side and we'll repeat the process we did with the first lens. We're going to take a look at this and we're going to examine it real quick. We're going to make sure there's no air bubbles or any foreign objects in here. And I'm not seeing any, usually a small micro bubble, something like that, will show up. It looks like a, uh, a piece of pepper got in there. Is it possible to get the bubbles out once it's filled? Yes, uh, once it's filled and you want to get a bubble out, you would simply take it and put it in a dark area and just like any bubble in liquid, the bubble will rise through to the top and it'll usually wedge itself in an edge somewhere and you'll be able to edge the bubble out. So while this is going, we can take this, this is the annealing oven and if you, I'm sorry, the curing oven and you can see the lights that are in here each side. And these are high intensity fluorescent lights that help cure the lens and to cure it is to harden it. So we'll take this as long as we know there's no bubbles in it. We can set it in here and when you close the drawer it automatically starts the 10 minute timer. You can see it start to blink. And so you just let it go. It'll do it all by itself. What do the green lights show here? Green light shows that that particular side of the machine it reinforces the blinking light that it is in use. Okay. The next step is we are going to um, take apart this mold and transfer it to the annealing stage and we'll show you the tools that are needed. And the BB means uh, the lenses are done curing, so let's move on to the next step. All right, so once it's beeped, all you do is take it out. You can take a look and you can see it doesn't spill up. All it does is harden while it's in there. So you'll take it out of the holder. Always keep things put in their proper place. The filling tube that was in here, there's always a little extra. And you'll want to disconnect that from the lens so it comes out of the mold. Alright, as you can see this is grooved, slides right in and as you create tension on it, it flexes the mold. Is that sound that we just heard, the crack sound, is that bad or is that good? That's a good sound. That one is. You can break these molds if you overflex them. It takes a lot to overflex them. What you just heard was the lens separating. Once that's done, it has a little pry bar in there. You use your vent. You simply raise the other side. I like to loosen both of them, make sure I've got them good. And we take our time and we slowly, so that we don't scratch anything, remove it, brings it out. You can see the lens, although it's really very, very clear at this point, we're going to make it even cleaner and clearer next. Take a thumb, just kind of push it out of the mold. You'll hear this thing disconnect. Sure that this is off because you want it to lay flat. This has a non-glare coat on it and if you do not lay it flat in here you'll wind up flexing the non-glare coat. If you lay it out and let it come back into shape you will the lens will still be good. The non-glare coat may check at that point. So you'll set it up here in your annealing oven and let it lay flat. Now, is, it, is, this, is this hot up here? Should I be careful? 80 degrees Celsius. That is warm. Be careful of it. We 
straightens up. And again, it's clear. You'll double check to make sure that nothing's going to make it warp. Set it here. You'll close your annealing oven. You'll start your timer and she'll cook for 20 minutes. In there, she'll relax. Your prescription will come to right. There won't be any prism. There won't be any aberrations. Your lens will be clear and it'll be ready for the cooling stage. Now, how do you place the lenses in the nailing station? Is it um, right side up or how do I know? Well, uh, an eyeglass lens has what we call a base curve and that just very fancy term for the fact that it's got an arch in it. And you always lay it arch up. This way there's very minimal surface that's being subjected to a hard surface that may scratch your lens. I'm sure we've all had scratches on our eyewear, not much.